Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is a BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 Chemistry and it's going to look at the reaction of alkenes with hydrogen halides. So where does that sit in the specification then? Down the bottom here, look, electrophilic addition of water, halogens, hydrogen halides and sulfuric acid. So this is one of four reactions that we're looking at today. And we also need to have some prior knowledge though on the symmetric and asymmetric alkenes, which is earlier on in the spec, it's up here. And there's also the previous video that does look at the stability in carbo of carbocations. So if you haven't seen those two videos, I suggest you do watch those first. And I will put links in the description below. So there's four reactions of alkenes then that we need to be aware of. And this video is only going to look at this one here up in the top right. And the product that we're going to see today is going to be a halo alkane. First up though, if you don't subscribe, please do. Your support is very much appreciated. Please use the likes and comment features and let me know what we think. So the outcomes or the aims for this video then is we're going to look at the mechanism for the reaction of alkenes with hydrogen halides. And we need to be able to identify and explain the major and minor products for the reactions with asymmetric alkenes. So again, just a reminder that you do need to be aware of what an asymmetric alkene is. So make sure you know that bit first. Some prior knowledge then. We need to know that the double bond in an alkene is a sigma and a pi bond. Okay, so it's not two identical bonds. We need to know the difference between a symmetric and an asymmetric alkene. And we need to have an, some knowledge that hydrogen halides are in fact polar covalent molecules. You'll have seen that in unit one chemistry. So a hydrogen halide is just hydrogen with something from group seven. So for example, HF, HCl, HBr, HI. They'd all be examples of hydrogen halides and they are all polar. So for example, if I just look at the first one, a HF molecule, F is more electronegative. So it's delta minus and there's a delta plus on the hydrogen. And that will be the case for all hydrogen halides. The X is going to be delta minus and the H will be delta plus. That's what we mean by a polar covalent molecule. Let's look over the key facts for these reactions of alkenes then. So that carbon-carbon double bond is an area of high electron density because there's in fact two pairs of electrons, there's the pi bond and the sigma bond. So we've got four electrons that have been shared between the two atoms. Electrons are negatively charged. This makes alkenes attractive to electrophiles. What's an electrophile? Well, an electrophile is a species that will accept a pair of electrons and are attracted to areas of high electron density. So when alkenes react, those pi bond electrons, those two electrons in the pi bond, are donated to an electrophile and new groups are added to both of those carbons either side of the double bond. So these reactions of alkenes then are called electrophilic addition. Why electrophilic addition? It's called addition because we're adding two groups across that double bond as the pi bond breaks. And electrophilic because the reaction involved the attack by an electrophile. Now in the example that we're looking at today, the electrophile is hydrogen halide. And why is it, why is it an electrophile? Well, if I draw out HX, so remember X is anything from group seven. So my example could be HBr. This is a polar molecule, delta minus, delta plus, delta minus and delta plus. So this left-hand side, this hydrogen will accept a pair of electrons and it's attracted to electron density because it's slightly positive. So this will be attractive to or attracted to that carbon carbon double bond and that hydrogen will accept a pair of electrons. So let's look at a specific example then. We're going to look at the reaction of butuene, which is a symmetrical alkene with HCl. So I'm going to draw my electrophile here, HCl. And I know that it's delta plus and delta minus. I've purposely drawn the hydrogen up the top because I know it's the delta plus hydrogen that's going to be attracted to that carbon-carbon double bond. So the first thing that happens then 
is the pi bond attacks that hydrogen. So we show an arrow. An arrow shows the movement of two electrons. So I'm showing the movement of two electrons from the pi bond to that hydrogen. Then the hydrogen chlorine bond breaks and both of those electrons go to the chlorine. And that's going to leave us with a Cl minus. So I'm just going to put Cl minus over here and a pair of electrons. Now, when this hydrogen here that's just been attacked by this, these electrons, or this hydrogen has been attacked by the pi electrons, we've got two possibilities. The hydrogen will either be bonded to the carbon on the left or the carbon on the right. And that's why we often have possible or two possible products. So if it's going to bond to the carbon on the left, we're going to end up with this scenario. So we'll have a CH3 and a H. The carbon on the right, a CH3 and a H. And if I show the hydrogen bonding on the left, that's going to leave the carbon on the right as a positive charge, a, carb a carbocation. We've seen carbocations in the previous video. If the hydrogen was to bond to the carbon on the right, that would leave the carbon on the left as a carbocation, and the carbon on the right has the hydrogen from HX, or in this case, HCl. So those are the two possible carbocations, and there's always going to be two possible carbocations. Now, because this alkene was symmetrical, both of these carbocations are actually exactly the same. So when it's a symmetrical alkene, you do only actually get one carbocation because both are actually the same. So I don't need to show a major and a minor product because both products will be exactly the same. So to finish this mechanism then, I'll finish the one off on the right hand side. The last step is that these pair of electrons from the chlorine will now form a bond with this carbon and our final product looks like this. And this is, to name it, 2-chlorobutane. And all we've done, if we look, we've actually added HCl across the double bond because we've got HCl instead of, this used to be a double bond, so we've added HCl. Okay, so what if we have the electrophilic addition of HCl with an asymmetric alkene then? So we'll go through the same, same first step. That pi bond attacks that hydrogen. I draw my curly arrow there. The HCl bond breaks. And that gives me my two possible carbocations. And I'll identify them both again. So this time I'm going to bond the hydrogen to the one on the left, leaving the carbocation as the carbon on the right of the double bond. And if I attach or bond the hydrogen to the carbon on the right, that's going to leave the carbon on the left as a carbocation. Like so. Just finish this diagram. I'm trying to colour code it so you can see where the hydrogen's gone. There we go. So that's carbocations. Now these two carbocations are definitely not the same this time. This carbocation is in fact a secondary carbocation, and the carbocation on the left is a primary carbocation because it's only got one electron pushing R group. Now, what we learned in the previous video was that secondary carbocations are more stable. That means that this one on the right hand side, because it's a secondary, is more stable than the one on the left hand side, which is a primary. That means that it's more stable. So this one on the left will give rise to our major product. So this will be our major product now. Just finish this off. Oops, no, why have I done 
H there, it should be a CL. So that's a CL there, that's a H there. So we've added HCl across the double bond, but we know that this one on the right hand side now, this is going to be our major product. And this is in fact 2 chlorobutane. Now we will still get some of this one on the left, the primary, but we'll just get less of it. So we call it the minor product. So just to finish off my mechanism for the one on the left, the last step of this would be exactly the same. So this would be going to form one chlorobutane. Let me finish this. There we go. So we've added HCl, H and Cl across the double bond. H has gone to one, Cl has gone to the other. We do get two products, so we do get one chlorobutane and two chlorobutane. However, as explained earlier, this one here was our major product because it formed via the secondary carbocation, which is more stable than the primary. So one chlorobutane being our minor product and two chlorobutane being our major product. And that's it for this video. There are other videos on reactions of alkenes. And again, don't forget that you need to be clear on your stability of carbocations. So use those links in the description and brush up on those as well. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks for watching.